A few weeks ago, I visited the site of an ancient asteroid strike in Central Australia. It's spectacular and very, very daunting. If a similar asteroid were to strike today, it'd be curtains for us all. So imagine the fury of scientists when the federal government stopped funding SpaceGuard, one of the world's leading programs tracking asteroids. The government says there's nothing to worry about. But scientists warn this leaves us blind to the threat above. This is Hollywood's version of an asteroid slamming into Earth. Scientists insist this is pure filmmaker's fantasy. The reality will be far, far worse. Since the end of the Cold War, there's only one thing left which could cause a global catastrophe, which could wipe us all out or send us back into the Dark Ages. And that's an asteroid hitting the Earth. I don't know. Perhaps this is just, this is just nature's way of giving us the flick. Our planet is being stalked. The enemy is any one of the thousands of giant chunks of rock whose passage through space could lead to a collision with Earth. You know, the reality is that right now, as I sit here speaking to you, I know that there are asteroids bigger than 50 or 60 metres in size which are closer to the Earth than the Moon. Well, these two telescopes... Astronomer Duncan Steele has dedicated his life to hunting asteroids. He says we're seriously ill-prepared for this threat from space. You never know. It could be tomorrow. It could be right now as we're speaking that in fact one has entered the atmosphere above Sydney. And if a 50 or 60 metre rock enters above Sydney, hey, everywhere has had it. Asteroids can be as small as pebbles and as big as planets. Their numbers are infinite and they're hitting Earth all the time. Most burn up in the atmosphere, like this one filmed in the 70s. But the big ones get through. This is Wolf Creek Crater in Western Australia. If I'd been standing here 300,000 years ago, I would have seen what probably looked like a bright shooting star in the eastern sky. We now know it was a small asteroid, travelling at about 15 kilometres per second. It crossed over eastern Australia in five minutes. I would not have been alive to witness the final moments of its collision, but even today, the scale of that impact is simply breathtaking. This crater here was blasted in the Australian outback by the impact of an object about the size of a small office block and flattened everything in an area maybe up to a thousand square kilometres around. So, one hell of a bang. Paul Davies is another Australian astrobiologist trying to sound the alarm. This is just a lottery. Uh, the, these objects uh, don't come on cue. Uh, it's totally random. And there are many more smaller ones than, than big ones. And so uh, explosions of the magnitude that produce this crater here will occur on average perhaps every few hundred years. Paul Davies believes Australia is lucky that so far, asteroids have only hit in the outback. But more are coming. It's not a matter of if, but when. Definitely when, because uh, it's not going to stop now. This bombardment's been going on throughout geological history, and it's going to continue. It is true that Australians, on the average, are at greater risk because we tend to live around the coasts. We live around the coast, you're facing onto big targets. You know, the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean in particular, is a big target. And a decent asteroid going plonk into the middle of the Pacific is going to cause a tsunami, which is going to take out, in essence, all of the cities along the east coast. A tsunami rises up off the shore over there to several hundred metres. It would come straight across Sydney Heads, crashing through the harbour here, over the top of the harbour bridge. It would take out that the whole CBD, and then it would surge on into those suburbs beyond. Millions would perish, no doubt about that. And if an asteroid actually hit the city? It would flatten 
the whole city with the blast wave and it would send a shock wave into the surrounding countryside and cause damage uh, for, for tens of kilometers. Uh, if it were to explode in the air above the ground, as they often do, the devastation could be even worse. It has happened. 65 million years ago, an asteroid wiped out nearly all life on Earth. The impact and the aftermath left dinosaurs extinct. When we're talking about a decent sized asteroid, let's say one kilometre across hitting the Earth, you're talking about energy being released which is far in excess of all the world's nuclear arsenals put together. And quite clearly, something hitting the Earth which kills millions, perhaps billions of people, is going to cause a total disintegration of the society which we currently know. It. We have liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying the near spacecraft bound for the asteroid Eros. For the past decade, NASA has sent cameras into space to learn more about asteroids. Along with dozens of other countries, America is constantly searching and tracking asteroids. Congratulations. Last year, they even landed on an asteroid called Eros. These are the images they saw. But who is watching over the southern skies? Does Australia know what deep space is throwing our way? We believe there are something like 1,200 asteroids bigger than about one kilometre in size on Earth crossing orbits, potential impactors of the Earth. We found about half of them. Well, the ones which are dangerous to us at the moment are those we haven't seen yet. So people think we've got all these things mapped, and that's the problem. That's what we keep saying. We haven't yet found all these objects. They think that there's these batteries of telescopes scouring the skies, and there just aren't. You know, there are, we always say there's less people working on looking for asteroids worldwide than works in the average McDonald's. That's the way it is. In 1996, the Howard government withdrew all money for what was known as Space Guard our part in the global response to the asteroid menace. But since then, despite repeated pleas by the international scientific community, the government has refused to renew the funding, effectively leaving us blind to what might be passing through the southern skies. The Space Guard program, led by Duncan Steele, had identified 30% of known asteroids. Steele now teaches in England and no one is keeping watch over Australia. Australia in this area is a pariah. It's regarded as being a total outcast. It is the only country ever to have closed down a successful asteroid program when all the other countries are gearing up. I'm not going to be spooked or panicked into spending scarce research dollars on a fruitless uh, attempt to predict the, the next asteroid. Peter McGoran is the Minister for Science. He axed the Space Guard program taking Australia out of astronomy's version of Neighbourhood Watch. We spend about $18 million a year on astronomy, and, and that's a significant investment by Australia, particularly by worldwide standards. I wouldn't like to divert up to five or more percent of that budget towards a, a fruitless, unnecessary self-indulgent exercise. Self-indulgent because scientists like Duncan Steele think it should be done? How many others agree with them? I know they've gathered together a number of scientific generalists, I want the astronomers themselves ex with, un, under the supervision of an objective worldwide uh, working party making a true and proper assessment. I'm just not convinced that, that the hype and, and alarm and even fear mongering is enough to justify an instant investment. A letter went to Mr Howard last week with 91 signatories, in essence a roll call of all the world's experts in this area saying please we need Australia to be involved. You, you are the most technologically developed country in the Southern Hemisphere. We need you to be involved in this. I lie awake worrying about a lot of other things. Near miss or asteroids is not one of them. Who are you going to get to guard the planet? A bunch of astronomers or a bunch of scientists? I don't think so. It's clearly, uh, firmly a defence matter. Brian Boyle is director of the Anglo-Australian Observatory in Sydney. He says, what's the point of tracking asteroids if there's nothing you can do to stop them? My colleagues are very well intentioned and I have the greatest of respect for these people and they're right to identify it as an issue. But frankly, I think that 
a threat that exists without a credible response policy, as, as the asteroid threat is indeed is, uh, is not looking at the full picture. Please don't lose any sleep. The asteroid is not necessarily going to come and get you tomorrow. The name of the game is map all these objects out there, determine their orbits, many orbits before they're going to come back and hit the Earth, and then be able to say, hey, look, this one here, you know, that one's a danger to us. And, says Steele, there are ways we can save ourselves if we have enough warning. The weapons aren't. Not quite deep impact, but using nuclear weapons to deflect an incoming asteroid well ahead of impact time. Three, two, one, now. The dinosaurs did not have a space program, that's why they died. We need to have a space program in order to save ourselves from the next asteroid impact. It isn't a matter of if one of these things is going to hit the Earth, it's just a matter of when. Either we can expect 23 years warning, or six or seven seconds. Okay. The most likely answer at the current time is six or seven seconds. We'll be aware of the asteroid which is going to hit us as it enters the atmosphere and all of a sudden lights up far, far brighter than the sun. And that would be it. That's it. You can kiss everything goodbye. Hello, I'm Dimity Clancy. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.